one way I keep myself in the studio and I can buy clay to work with and pay for the internet to put the uh, videos that I shoot on to the web is through my sales of my uh, instructional videos. Um, if you're so inclined, uh, check the link below this video uh, where I have a review of all nine of my current instructional videos and uh, see if you possibly find anything interesting there. Um, I pretty much give you my over 50 years of experience in sculpting and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, consider purchasing one or two or even all my videos. Um, they're streaming online on Vimo and uh, you need a passcode to see them but that works forever as long as you have that passcode and the link so please uh, consider that and let's get busy on sculpting now end of promotion <laughs> time to play with some play So as you can see, I just add little pieces of rolled out clay, not too many, just, just enough to give a direction for the uh, hair. What she would do is take hair. three plaits of hair and twist them, and then take the end of the twist and tuck it into the... Uh, bun on the back of her head and uh, I'm trying to indicate that you can't do every hair but you can do masses of hair and uh, segments of hair to give the same effect braided hair in the back and all bundled up into uh, a bun and it would have been two braids one going down each side and then they were tied together all right all i'm doing is applying ronsonol lighter fluid to my clay this is a plastiline clay and it's has an effect on the clay itself to smooth it. Now I'm going to be doing this several times during the life of creating this sculpture, even after I'm done with these uh, this video. And uh, to finalize the clay even more. I'll do the same thing with his face as well once I get to the point where I can do that. I've still got a lot of texture to do in the hair here, but this kind of smooths out what I've done already on this part. And uh, it helps me to see how it's going to look when it's all finished. This is a 1860s hairstyle and one that would have been worn during the Civil War and sometime after by the pioneers as they crossed the prairie. Now I'll get a softer brush when I finalize this piece, but that works for now. 
All right, it's time to work on her hand. And I'm going to have her thumb going over the blanket where it goes inside her hand, where she, she's holding on to it. And I need to make an indention in the robe where her fingers go on the other side of the fold of the blanket. Does that make sense? I don't know. I've got on um, uh, my LG uh, pad a anatomy uh, sculpture of what a hand looks like with all the tendons and everything. It just helps me picture how to sculpt the hand. All right, I'm just putting the finishing touches on uh, her hand, grabbing onto the uh, blanket here. In the uh, video I'm making, I showed how to make the hand look like it's got tendons under the skin. And uh, it's a little trick I learned years ago uh, through just having to figure out how to do it. And uh, I'll probably redo this handle again, but uh, right now uh, this just gives me an idea what uh, it's going to look like. I'm going to do the rest of the arm and the clothing tomorrow. Today I'm just going to have to call it quits because it's getting late in the afternoon and I spent a long time on the hair getting it to where I like it. And I do like it. And getting her face to where I could uh, do some final tweaks on it. And uh, on the hair they where it meets his cheek. So, anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Please give me a like and a subscribe and ring the little bell. Also, don't forget I have instructional videos available now online. The link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos. Later, everybody. Good night.